Tu Zangpo, welcome to e-learning project of Bhutan. I am Mindu Doji and I am the teacher of Losling Middle Secondary School. Today we have selected a topic that is graphical representation of a data. Well, before we go into the graphical representation, let me tell you or let me define you what is data. Data is a collection of information. It can be any kind of data. For example, how many of you like Apple? Or how many of you like to watch Korean serials? I'm sure that most of the students, they like to watch the Korean serials. Now, for example, in a class of 20 students, let's say that 10 students like Korean serials, five students like Hindi soap, and rest of the students like comic book. This kind of data, this collection of this data is called, this collection of information is called the data. Today's objective of this lesson is you are going to represent that whatever data we have collected, you are going to represent that data into a circle graph. In other words, circle graph is also called the pie chart. And you are also going to represent that data in, into a whisker plot and into a scattered plot. Then, you are going to use that information from the tables, pictures, or diagrams, or graphs to describe the change. Data, as you know that data is a collection of facts or information, or it can be measurement or observation or even just a description of uh, things. As I have already explained about the circle graph, scatter plot, and pie chart, I am going to take one beautiful example so that by, with, uh, with the help of that example, you will know how to plot that information, that data into a circle graph or a pie chart. There are total number of 36 students, and out of 36 students, we are going to uh, collect the data of students who scored uh, the marks between 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, and 40 to 50. Say for example, 0 to 10, there are six students who got 0 to 10 marks. Then there are seven students uh, who got between 10 to 20. And there are 13 students who got the marks between 20 to 30. And there are four students between, uh, who got the mark between 40 to 50. How are you going to represent this information or this data into a circle graph? So here, there are two ways you can uh, represent that uh, collected information or data into a circle graph. So firstly, we can also represent them into a percentage in a circle. And secondly, we can also represent that data into a uh, degree measurement. Now this, we are going to convert it into degree first, then after that into percentage. The marks between 0 to 10, there are six students who got the marks between 0 to 10. How are you going to convert that into degree percentage? Now see, as you can see that six students means out of 36 students, six students got uh, between 0 to 10 marks times 360 will be 60 degree. In the same manner, 7 divided by 36 times 360 will be 70 degree. Uh, 13 student will be 130 degree. 6 student will be 60 degree again. And 4 student will be 40 degree. And in the same manner, when you convert that uh, uh, collected data into percentage, will be 17%, the first one would be 10 to 20 will be 19%. 20 to 30 will be 36%, 30 to 40 will be 17%, and 40 to 50 will be 11%. After you fi find out the degree measurement, it will be very easy for you to represent them in a circle graph. Before we represent them, it's very important for you to first draw the circle. Then after drawing the circle, you make sure that uh, you draw a line between the center point to the circumference. Then after that, you can start measuring. First, you use your protector to measure whatever uh, calculation that you got. For example, 0 to 10 is 60 degree. Use your uh, protector to draw 60 degree, then 40 degree, then 60 degree, then 130 degree, and 70 degree. 
so this is how you can represent them in a, a circle graph now second part how are you going to represent them in a percentage here you could see that a circle can be uh, can be 100 percent well now as you could see that's 60 degree 60 degree represents 17 percent 70 degree represent 19 percent 130 degree represent 36 percent whereas 60 degree again same 70 percent and 11 percent will represent 40 degree this is how you can represent a circle graph from the collected data the next part of the question is how are you going to uh, represent the information the data into a box or a viscous block here i am going to give you an example of 13 students who scored different marks out of 100 30 students 45 76 78 98 43 66 41 33 76 56 59 66 and 65 these are the marks scored by 13 students out of 100 it can be marks of for that subject it can be marks for english tonka or any other subject how are you going to uh, represent this information this marks into a box discuss plot in order to uh, represent this uh, different marks into a box of viscous plot we need to arrange the data from least to greatest as you have as you can see that the list marks got by the individual student is 33 and the highest is 88 after you have finished arranging the data from list to greatest what are you going to do the next step would be divide that data into quartile 1 quartile 2 and quartile 3 now Q2 also means it's the median. Median means the middle data. So now you are going to divide this data into three quartiles, that is Q1, Q2, and Q3 in short form. So as you could see, that Q1 would be 45. The median, or you can also say in other words, Q2 is 65, and Q3 would be 72. After you have finished, dividing that data into three quartiles. Now you should also know that what is the least data? The least data value is 33 and highest data value is 88. Now, after you have finished finding everything, Q1, Q2, and Q3, then finding or dividing the data into three quartiles, then finding the greatest value and the least value. Now what you are going to do, the next step would be, you need to draw a number line number line starting from 0 to 90 why did we write 0 to 90 because 88 is the highest data value in this information well after you have uh, uh, finished drawing the number line now you are supposed to draw q1 q2 and q3 so how are you going to draw q1 q2 and q3 what is q1 q1 is 45 now let's mark q1 as 45 and what is the median? Median is 65. Let's mark as 65. And the upper quartile will be 72. Let's mark it 72. Now, after you have finished marking Q1, Q2, and Q3, let us draw the box here. This becomes the box. What about the whiskers? How are you going to draw the whiskers? Let's look at what is the least value. The least value is 33. Now, list value. Let's draw a line from 33 to 1. That becomes the viscous. Now, what is the highest value or the maximum value? The maximum value is 88. Now, let's draw a line from Q3 to 88. As you could see that you have already finished drawing the viscous plot. Now, this viscous plot will give you lots and lots of information. Say for example, if your box is very narrow, that shows that most of the data value is clustered. And if your whiskers plot or the box is very wide, that will tell you that the information or the data value it, it is spread out. That time we have uh, drawn a whiskers plot for odd set of data. It is very uh, easy to find out the median that is Q2 the data collected is odd. For example, here we have taken 13 data. Now, how about if the set of data is even number? How about if it is 14? How are you going to find Q1, 
and Q3. First, let us find out Q2, that is the median. Median means central data divided by 2. You, you need to take the central data, that is 65 and 66, and you have to divide by 2. That becomes the median or Q2. Now, how about Q1 and Q3? The Q1 would be the half of that data, that is 7 data. Out of 7, the middle data, 45 would be Q1. And in the same manner, the other half, that is 7 data, the middle data will be Q3. That would be 76. Now, if the set of data is even, then this is how you are going to find Q1, Q2, and Q3. How are you going to draw, how are you going to represent the data into a scatter plot? That is again very easy. Let's take for an example. Now I have here taken the examples of the data which is given there. So here on first figure number one, three heart, figure number two, we have five heart, and figure number three, we have seven. How are you going to represent this data in scatter plot? Before we actually represent them in a, into a scatter plot, we need to draw the table of values. So here in figure number one, as you could see, that the heart, there are three heart, two is five, three is seven. That's very simple. Now, after you found out this set of data, how are going to plot into a scattered graph? So, now, to do this, first draw our x coordinate and mark one, two, and three. Then you can draw y coordinate, mark two, four, six, eight, and you, you need to look at the highest data. The highest data is 7, so we can take up to 8. So now after you have finished drawing X coordinate and Y coordinate, you check that figure number 1 represents how much? 3. So figure number 1 represents 3. So mark a point on 3. Figure number 2 represents 5. Mark on 5. Then figure number 3 represents 7. Mark on 7. So that becomes your scatter plot. Today, we have learned how to represent the different information into a circle graph, into a box viscous plot, and a scattered plot. You have already learned how to do that. Now, why not you try this question? In a class of 36 students, draw a circle graph for the marks given below. So for example, marks of 10, 0 to 10. There are five students who obtain between a mark 0 to 10, 8 students 10 to 20, between 10 to 20, 12 students from 20 to 30, 7 students from 30 to 40, and 4 students from 40 to 50. Now, how are you going to represent them into a circle graph? Now, the second question would be, let's try for the second question. Now, say the questions given the, the following questions of, uh, there are seven students who got the following mark. 50, 80, 70, 60, 90, 40. By looking at this information, draw a viscous plot. You try and explore at your place. If you can do this, then you're good enough. If you can't, please keep on trying and don't give up. Thank you and good day. Thank you so much and fresh delay.